So today we're going to be talking about a new registration requirement effective as of January 1st. It's called the Beneficial Ownership Information, or in other words, known as BOI registration. So this is just what the website looks like that you're reporting to, and we'll be going over this in more detail in a minute. We're going to talk about the details first. So what is a beneficial ownership information requirement? So this is a registration required to identify owners or the key employees of certain companies. And the design was to uncover illegal activities associated with, with individuals creating shell companies or intentionally trying to hide the ownership of a company. So who is required to report? So first of all, if you're a domestic reporting company, these are corporation, limited liability companies, or other entities created by the filing of a document with the Secretary of State, or in a case of Virginia, it's the uh, State Corporation Commission. This includes most nonprofits. Now, foreign reporting, if you have a foreign company this would also um, be under formed under foreign country registrations. So first of all, you're going to be hearing about what's a beneficial owner. So a beneficial owner is someone who owns at least 25% of the company, or it could be the substantial control of the company by senior officers or someone who performs these duties. So in other words, if you have a CEO, a CFO, those individuals in those positions, they may not have any ownership in the company or less than 25%, but they still are considered a beneficial owner because they have substantial control over the company and they would be required to be registered. So are there any exemptions to filing? So in a case where you might not have to file. Well, if you're a 501c organization, C3, 66, 67, 68, things like that, typically you're filing another tax return with the IRS, you would not be required to. Trusts are not required to. So this is a big one. Sole proprietorships or partnerships that are not set up as a legal entity. In other words, if it's just a plain old sole proprietorship or partnership, they are not required to be registered. And then there's large company exemptions. And in order to apply for that, the company must have more than 20 full-time employees working at least 30 hours per week. And those 20 employees must be within the United States. And they have an operating presence in the United States. And they must be doing at least $5 million in gross receipts over the previous years as documented by their tax return. And if they're doing more than that, 5 million of it must be within the United States. In other words, they might be doing $10 million, but only 4 million in the United States, then they would still be required to register. So an inactive entity could also be exempt if it falls under these circumstances. It was created before January 1st, 2020. It's not conducting any business right now. It's not owned partially or wholly by any foreign person. There has not been any ownership changes over the last 12 months. There's no income for the business within the last 12 months of $1,000 or more. And it doesn't really hold any assets or ownership in other businesses. There's also a longer list um, that's listed in the Small Business Compliance Guide. But for most cases, that's not going to apply to this audience because it's going to be more like public traded companies, banks, and things like that. So is there a penalty for not filing? Well, willfully failure to file can result up to $500 per day. For, that's for $500 per day of, that you have not been um, compliant with. There's also could be criminal penalties up to two years in prison and fine up to $10,000. And this is not just for the company or the owners. It's also for the senior officers. So in other words, make sure you file. All right. So 
in the process, there is what we call a company applicant. And the company applicant is the one who's directly completing the application. In other words, it may not be an owner who's actually completing the application. Under our circumstance, most of the time, the owner probably would be. But if not, it's the uh, applicant. And it could also be the person who controls the filing of the application is also considered an applicant. So maybe it's not an owner, but the uh, senior person or something like that. So is this person completing the application also required to report who they are? Well, if the company was created prior to January 1st of 2024, the company applicant, it's not required to put their name in there. However, after January 1st or as of January 1st, 2024, the company applicant is required to list their name, address, and other information to validate who they are. So when do we have to report? So if your entity, was created prior to January 1st of 2024, you actually have until January 1st of 2025 before you have to complete this report. I would go ahead and do it so you don't forget it, but you do have one year to complete it. However, if you create an entity on or after January 1st of 2024, you have 90 days from the date you create your entity to go ahead and set it up. Typically, what I would do is you're setting up a new entity is just immediately do it as part of your setup procedure. And then starting next year on January 1st, 2025, that 90 days goes to 30 days. <clears throat> so what is required to report? Well, on the company level, it's basically name, um, doing business as, physical address, your EIN and TIN from an applicant and the beneficial owner's information. You got to put in your full name, date of birth, current address, and you have to have a proof of identity. So you got to actually upload your, a copy of your driver's license, a passport, or other government ID that's not expired. And Social Security is not a valid ID. If you do happen to have a minor child, a child that is not, uh, who is an owner, of 25% or more, you do not have to list them, but the, the guardian or parent must be listed. So there is also part of the process what's called a FinCEN identifier. This is if you, as you're going through the process, if you want to have a FinCEN number, you can do that. Typically, for most small, small business, you're probably never going to need it. Um, but if you want to, it's an optional process. You just have to check a box that says you want one. So is this going to be an annual requirement? In other words, every year do I have to fill this out? And the answer is typically no. The only time you have to make a change is if there's, if there's a change to the original report. And this could be you've changed your address, the ownership has changed, the key leadership has changed. Maybe you've added a new doing business as, or even more importantly, any expiration on the ID documents that you were used has changed, then you're also going to have to issue a change. Could also be if you had a minor child who reaches 18 and they weren't previously reported, then you're going to have to update the report to, to add them into the equation. There is no requirement to report the closing or dissolving of a company. So if you're closing a the company, there's not a report a requirement to report that. If you have these changes, or if you find out you've made some mistakes, you've only got 30 days from the time you, the change was made to make these changes. So make sure you, you keep up with those changes. In regards to important links, the actual reporting link you'll see here is this fincen.gov backslash BOI. There's also a, a really good detailed compliance guide at this address here that will give you a lot more information, uh, probably more than you need to know. All right, so we're going to go through the whole process of filling this out and show you how not really difficult it is. So you'll go to this FinCEN website. On the front page, you'll see that I've had it highlighted, file a report. It'll open up this page here, and you're going to click on the e-filing of report. Next page you're going to go to, it's going to ask you how do you want to file it. You want to file it writtenly or online. 
just do it online because it's going to be a lot simpler. Okay, it's going to come up with a typical U.S. government warning um, before that you have to agree to. All right, so the first thing I'm going to be ask you is this an initial report, corrected a port, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be doing initial reports. So you just click on that first button that says initial report and make sure you always hit next. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, remember I talked about the FinCEN number. If you want to have a FinCEN number, then just click on that box there and then in turn we'll add you to that process and we'll send you a FinCEN number sometime in the future. All right, so we're reporting the company. So we're going to put in here the reporting company's legal name and if you have any doing businesses as. And if you have multiple doing business ads, you're going to have to hit add alternate name and add the additional doing business as names. So now the next page is going to be you're going to enter your EIN number of the company. Um, you're going to come down here and in, in where was the formation? Uh, United States most likely and Virginia most likely. Or if it was another state, you make sure you enter the correct state. You're then going to add the address of your location. It has to be a, an off, I mean, a, a, an actual physical address. It cannot be a post office address. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is go to um, asking you whether or not this is an existing reporting company. If it's a company that was existing prior to January 1st, you click on that button. And this company applicant information is not required to be completed. And you'll see that it's all grayed out so that you can't actually complete it. And you'll also get this little message that says you want to continue. Okay. We're going to make the assumption this is a new company just created in 2024. So we're going to uncheck that box. So it's going to allow you to start filling out this company applicant information. Again, remember the company applicant information is the information by the person who's actually completing the application. So you put your information in here, the name of the individual. You're going to go through the process of an address. You're going to, it's going to ask you what is the document that you're using to verify that person's, um, who that person is. You would enter in this case here, state driver's license with the identification number the county and what state the driver's license is issued from. And then you'll go over here where it says choose from folder and you'll upload the image in there that corresponds to the app, the company applicant. And of course you can always go to the top of the page and you'll see where you're at. In this case here, this is blued out to show you that you're in this section right here. All right. So now we're going to go to the beneficial owner. So in beneficial owners, we just talked about are going to be the 25% or more owners or senior type, um, own, uh, senior type officers, et cetera. And if you have more than one, you would keep adding these beneficial owners until you've added them all. There's a little box here. If it's a parent or guardian, you want to click on that. This again, if it's a minor child, if you already have a FinCEN number, you can put that FinCEN number and I'll already complete it, but I don't seriously anybody has a FinCEN number, so I'm going to skip that. All right, so now we're going to go down to page. Now, again, this is the first beneficial owner here. So we're going to enter his name, first name, last name, his birth date, his address. And now we're going to enter the, the type of identification of that individual, in this case here. We're using a passport with the passport identification document. And of course, that's all grayed out because it's not a state and it's US, US passport. Again, choose from your folder, upload, and it will upload that particular document. All right. Um, if you have additional ones, you would can keep going through your beneficial application until you've entered them all. Once you do that, you move to this step here, which is basically the submit page. You would enter your email address, confirm your email, enter your name and last name. Again, this is the applicant's information. Click on the agree button. There's a little button that says, I am human. It'll go through a process of asking you questions to verify that you're an actual person. 
and then you hit the submit BOR button. It goes through the process and in turn will give you this submission, submission status confirmation. As you see, that doesn't really take very long to go through this process, download it, and that is done. So that is your BOI requirement. Thanks.